Nick Lancaster is one of the world's leading dune experts. We're fortunate that he'll be our guide to Big Dune. What makes this particular area more conducive for a dune formation than other areas of the valley? That's a very good question. I think probably what's happened is that the wind has blown the sand up from the Amargosa River and then it kind of meets the winds coming down from the, the north, just like we have right now. And then the sand gets put, uh, pushed together into this little spot. Should we take a closer look at it? Yeah, yeah let's go up and let's <laughs> go and try and go up to the top there. We're going to hike the dune. Yeah, and we've got a nice windy day so we can actually see the sand moving around. Now I have a feeling that a dune is, is like so many other mountains, it's deceptive because it doesn't look like it's going to be much of a walk, but I'm, I'm guessing I'm wrong in that. I what think it probably say? will be quite a walk and that, <laughs> you know, perching on the ridge and getting up to fairly soft sand will be, you know, maybe quite a challenge. I hope not too much of one. <laughs> uh, what is it about this dune that makes this so special? Well, one is that it's uh, a star dune, which is kind of an unusual dune as if you take dunes throughout the world. The other thing that's really special about this is that uh, it does it, the sand actually makes noise when it slides down the, the face of the dune. What kind of a noise? I haven't actually been here when it's made a noise, but usually it's kind of a, a low rumbling sort of sound. So is the dune going to grow and take over the desert, or is the desert going to encroach and slowly eat up the dune? I think most likely what's going to happen here is that the dunes going to actually encroach on the desert because what's happening is that any sand that's anywhere around here in the valley uh, will get moved into, will come over to this, this dune. And the sand moves over this gravel surface really easily because it's hard mm. and the sand bounces on all the gravel um, pieces there. And then when it gets to the sand areas like the dune, it actually, that's, that's softer mm. as you'll discover as we walk up the dune. And basically it just gets it slows down here. So sand kind of tends to get deposited on sand. So sand almost acts like a magnet for other sand particles. That's right, yeah. <laughs> That's why you have sand dunes. <laughs> This is a unique experience for us, but for Nick it's nothing new. He spent years in Africa studying and teaching in the Kalahari Desert, Malawi, Johannesburg, and Namibia before coming to Nevada. There's no one better for us to be out here with. So here we are at the top. <laughs> we made it. We made uh, it. Great and view. And it's just kind a of like being on top of a mountain. You know, we really incredible. get the same sort of feel as you might do from being, you know, like on top of Everest or something like that. Yeah. Now I imagine this is not the first dune you've climbed. No, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. So do they stay distinct to you, or do they all begin to feel the same? Well, the, you know, they all have their own personality because they, one of the things that really makes a big difference is the color of the sand, because this is this kind of grayish colored sand. And then, you know, you've got sand dunes in Australia and some parts of Africa which are really red. And there's lots of yellowish brown ones in the, in the Sahara and things like that. So they all have their kind of personality. Now how come uh, we're on this, the thinner, smaller pieces up here? Well, because the, these are the ones that get most easily transported by the wind. So they're moved up to the, moved away and up to the top here. So just that slight, that tiny change difference in weight makes that much oh, of yeah. a difference. Well, these, these are probably half or a quarter of the size on average compared to the sand down hmm. at the bottom there. So. so when you study dunes as a geologist, you're actually part physicist and part, you, you study a lot of other things besides just the earth. Oh yeah, I mean there's a lot of physics in this and the physics people spend lots of time uh, trying to figure out how the sand moves in great, you know, in great detail. And uh, the other thing that's, in, you know, there's also a whole bunch of people, physics people who are interested in the fractals of sand dunes. But the one thing that on these dunes that's not really fractal in the same way are all of these little wind ripples that are down here. And you can see that they're all of these sort of stripes you can yes. see. Now why does that stay distinct? Well that's interesting. Basically it's the way the sand moves along the surface. Because what if you could see this in detail and really get down close to the oh, surface, yeah. you'd actually find the sand moves as a whole series of little tiny jumps. Mm -hmm. And it's actually called saltation. It almost makes it look like it's alive. 
Oh, it, yeah, it is. I mean, there's this little layer of the surface which is completely alive and basically moving around all the time. The wind's blowing. Can you explain uh, the process of, of what makes a singing sand dune sing? Well, basically it starts to sing when the sand slides down like, th like this. Um, but the sand, to do that, the sand has to be really dry like it is right now and also very well sorted, meaning all the grains are the same size and quite well and the sand grains also have to be kind of round as well. How much has to, has to fall to make it, make it boom? Uh, like at least that? this sort of amount. You should sort of be able to hear it with this amount of sand, but this may not be our day for hearing the dunes make some sound. Sort of like a little earthquake, you is know, with all the sand grains sound? are kind of vibrating together. Is it a real subtle sound or is it loud enough that you you'll, you'll, hear you, it? You, 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 wait, if, you, if it occurs, you'll know it's happening. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Kick sand Sorry. at him. What's, I mean, th that's not, that's like a squeaking. That's the squeaky sound. That's it. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> Do that again. That's it. <laughs> how does that, how come, why are you so good at that? I mean, that's perfect, that's exactly the... It's because I have big, flat feet. I mean. <laughs> hey, I did it. <laughs> hey. We can't thank Nick enough for sharing his knowledge with us.